NASCAR brings the heat to the Midwest here at Michigan International Speedway for the running of the Sirius Satellite Radio 400. Hey there guys, Mikey here the NASCAR Thunder 2003 Let's Play continues at one of the wider and faster ovals on the circuit. Without restrictor plates on these engines, cars can easily exceed 200 miles per hour before heading down into the long sweeping turns. We're getting set to give the command here at Michigan to see who will come out on top here on Father's Day weekend. Now here's MRN. Two will be the Motorcraft Ford and the Sprint Dodge. In row three are the 132 car and the Ganassi Racing Dodge. Dale Earnhardt Jr. leading the points race will start from the eighth place. Starting the race from row five will be the Valvoline Pontiac and the Mark Martin Ford. In row six, we have the Altel Ford and the Lowe Chevrolet. Starting from row seven will be the Rubbermaid Ford and the Pennzoil Chevrolet. In the eighth row are the 27 car and the DuPont Chevrolet. In the ninth row, we have the Target Dodge and the CarQuest car. In the 10th row are the 171 car and the Home Depot Pontiac. Starting the race from row 11 are the Napa Auto Parts Chevrolet and the Interstate Batteries Pontiac. The 12th row has the 63 car and the 98 car. Starting the race from row 13 will be the Sirius Satellite Radio Dodge and the Team Rusty Ford. In row 14, we have the 28 car and the 9 car. Starting from row 15 will be the GM Goodwrench Service Plus Chevrolet and the Dodge Dealers UAW Dodge. In the 16th row are the 46 car and the 16 car. In the 17th row are the Kodak Chevrolet and the Caterpillar Dodge. In the 18th row are the 199 car and the M&M's Pontiac. Starting the race from row 19 are the Kellogg Chevrolet and the Square D Chevrolet. The 20th row has the Singular Wireless Chevrolet and the UAW Delphi Chevrolet. Starting the race from row 21 will be the 26 car and the Tide Ford. And finally, starting from the rear of the field will be the 30 car. Well, there you have it, guys. There is the starting lineup for the Sirius Satellite Radio 400 here at Michigan International Raceway. Let's go ahead and get this race underway as Matt Kenseth and Jeff Burton lead them down to the line. Green flag is in the air. We're racing.
lap complete as we've already dropped back a few spots. Trying to work our way back up into the top 20 as we get around uh, Casey Kane. Forgot his name for a second there. Got the 171 car below us. That's one of the rookies. He's doing really well so far. Moving his way up into the top 20 as well. As we are battling a... Yeah, we're battling a tight car here, which is not good for us. We're going to try to work our way inside of Bill Elliott once more. We've got a fast car, but the grip is just not the best on this track. And I don't want to get it too loose because I don't want to have it wrecking loose. So, oh boy, contact with Bill Elliott. Ooh, 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 wow. See, that's what I don't want to have to deal with. It was we almost, I mean, I was fighting it coming off of turn two. But yeah, we almost completely lost it there. We've dropped back to 25th spot. Trying to be patient here. It's a fairly long race, but you know, we just uh, we got to get to where we can run some. Oh boy, sorry, Bill. We got to get to where we can run our qualifying laps. We're trying to trying to block Kevin Harvick a little bit, but uh, I'm not sure if we can do that or not. We're three wide and turns three and four. See, we're just so tight. We're so tight. We can't. We can barely turn this car. Like I said, I don't want to loosen it up too much. We just have to see how it'll do in the long run. I haven't done a long run with this car yet, so... We just have to see how it goes. So we're battling side by side with Ricky Rudd. Golly, car, would you please turn? Okay, we're fine. <laughs> we're fine. We're, we're, we're okay. Contact with uh, Jeremy Mayfield there. Boy. Steve Park's a little loose getting into the turn. He's having the opposite problem that we're having. So we got a good run off turns three and four that off, off of turn four that time. Able to kind of catch up to kind of catch up to Jimmy Spencer here. I'm using his draft sparingly because I need to run my line. Oh golly, car turn. Or not that much. Okay, we're fine. <laughs> we go down to turns three and four. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. We're, it's wearing down. It's tight. Yeah, really, really going to be excited for that chassis upgrade. And give us some more downforce and some more grip. Well, I think we're re we're actually researching, uh, we're researching downforce right now, but the the tire grip is being built. So once that's finished, it'll be after Sonoma once that's done. So we're trying to side draft here, but we just we just don't have the speed. Okay, easy, easy. Yeah, I have to get on get on the brakes a little bit harder there. Pit stops happening already. Pitch strategy is in effect. Now, what I don't want to do is I know I can make it on fuel. I'm actually running a default gear setup. So my fuel mileage is actually really, really good. Um, I've got a car that has speed. It just... Uh, it just doesn't have the handling, and I didn't want to give it too much speed and have the car just be in the wall every freaking turn. So, so I ran a default gearing setup, which is a, a little bit unusual from what I've run at Michigan before. But we've always been slow at Michigan, so now we're actually got a little bit of speed with our car. We could really see how to how it's going to handle, but we got to be. We just got to be careful with it because I feel like if I would have sped it up any more, I would just be in the wall every turn and that wouldn't be fun. 
This would slowly but surely become a Dover race, basically. Yeah, see, we're just tight. See, what I'm going to do is when halfway, around halfway, I'm going to go ahead and pit regardless of the fuel. Because I feel like if I stay out on these tires, they're just going to wear and I'm going to lose a bunch of time. I mean, there's always the chance that a caution can come out, but I'm not going to chance it. I, the, the field gets way too spread out at Michigan. There's too much racing room, so unless, like, someone blows up, and we have an incident like I believe we had one last week. Um, ooh, 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 stay up there, stay up there, Jimmy, stay up there. Oh boy, yeah, Jimmy's trying to come in, I think. Because he's, he's way down the bottom, not giving me a whole lot of room. Yeah, he was coming in. All right. Yep, we're just just past halfway on fuel, but see, like, I just cannot get this car to turn. So I'm going to go ahead and come in as soon as I can. I got to assume that I'm around 26, 27th now, as I know I've been passed by a few cars. So let's be easy, easy. Come on, car, get down to the bottom of the track. All right. All right, gotta make our way in down pit road. Slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. Okay. All right, lost one more spot, but that's fine. Uh, four tires, fuel. Um, let's go ahead and bump this down just a little bit. Uh, damage, we don't have any damage. We're gonna leave it on anyway, just in case we get some coming down pit road. So, ooh, got held up by Scott Wimber a little bit there, but it's fine. Our O'Reilly paint scheme. Oh, excuse me, our car. <laughs> it, uh, what is our sponsor, dang it? <laughs> car Quest. <laughs> I could remember. Uh, car Quest. Car Quest paint scheme. I said I like the, and I said before in a previous video, I like the the white against the the red, white, and blue for the Car Quest scheme. So I kind of kept it there. Um, all right, so we dropped back to thirty third. Which is worse than I was expecting to fall back to. You get on the track. Yeah, I, I know I should have waited. Yeah, I know I should have waited a little bit. We're not up to speed yet, but... I need to get up to speed as quickly as possible. Alright. So now we're back to 35th. Uh, wow. Could we have lost seven or eight spots on pit road? So this is what I was trying to avoid. Okay, we're in 32nd now. Oh, but here comes Steve Park. Oh boy, oh boy, watch it, watch it. I don't know if I can block both of these lanes. Steve Park's got a big run. I just don't think I... Oh, okay. I do manage to hold him off there. I didn't expect to, but yeah, did manage to hold him off. Let's see if we can catch up to Ricky Craven here. Get ourselves back into the top 30. So we are running really fast laps. You see, despite having the default setup, uh, default gear ratio, we're still running around 200 miles an hour before we get down to turns 1 and 2. And if Steve Park would just go away, <laughs> I may just have to let him go. So I can start running my line a little bit here, and I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and get around us, yeah. So we drop back to 33rd, which is okay. Um, Alright, so he's blocking the low lane now, so... Nothing we could really do there. Ooh, but I get a run on the high side. How about that? Trying to si I'm trying to side draft with them, but it's not working. It usually works, but the side draft's not working this time around. Oh boy! 
Steve Park almost lost to getting into three and four that time. And now he's back on the outside. I don't know how he, how was he able to gather that back up and get that much speed back that quickly? All right, side draft worked a little bit there, but not much. Mind you, this is a battle for 33rd position. <laughs> ah. I'm not sure what to do about the whole pit crew situation. Because, if I remember correctly, I wasn't losing this many spots when I was pitting, like, with with 18 second pit stops, you know. So, I'm guessing we're gonna have to get a new crew. I don't know. I don't know, it's hard to say. I just, I, I don't want it to be one of those moments where, um, I don't know if we can get a better crew. I don't know if that'll help out or not. I don't know, it's hard to say, because we're, we're, we're averaging around 16 second pit stops, 16 and a half thereabouts, and we weren't doing that, we weren't anywhere near that before this season, and we weren't losing as many spots, so, and it's, it's getting, oh boy, oh boy, give me some room guys, come on. I mean, Steve Park and I have been battling for so long. Ward Burton's going to go with him on the high side, mainly because that's the preferred line. Okay, now he's going to be behind us. Nope, he's going back up high behind Ward, behind Steve Park. Oh boy, this is a good race. I just wish it was for a higher position. He dropped back to 35th. I'm starting to wonder something because because uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of you watch uh, Jonathan Wolf 038 and he's talked about artificial difficulty where like the game will just do something to make it hard the thing was the thing is I would think it would have done this a long time ago with 18 second pit stops but it feels like with with it just feels like there's artificial difficulty now. It's like, okay, I'm faster. Now I need. Now we need to make something else slower, or make everyone else faster, to to make it difficult. So it's it's still hard for you to win a race and stuff like that. So I feel like some of that's happening here, especially with pit stops and stuff like that. And up oh, checkered flag. Somebody has just won this race. As we are trying, I was trying to push. Uh, I was trying to push um, Jerry Nadu around the 22 car, but I couldn't get around him. He wouldn't. He just wouldn't go after a while. So we're gonna finish 34th. Okay, well, that's that's go home. Yeah, Matt Kenseth is the race winner. Good for him. A rare caution-free race. You know, that's pretty amazing. It says a lot about the quality and true talent of these NASCAR Winston Cup drivers. The CarQuest car finished towards the back of the field in this one. Well, he gave it all he had, and that's all you can ask of any driver. Until next time, everybody, this is Joe Moore along with Barney Hall saying thank you for joining us for today's NASCAR Winston Cup race. Well, thank you, MRN, and yeah, we did a fairly decent job taking care of our stuff we did get a little bit of a happiness bonus no prestige bonus though so that's not good for the sponsors uh but the crew is happy just not the not the uh not the sponsors so let's go ahead and go through the race stats here and 
Matt Kenseth is your race winner. He wins here at Michigan International Speedway. I know I said raceway before. That was an accident. Uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. comes in second. Good points day for him. Ryan Newman in third. Tony Stewart will be in fourth. And Dale Jarrett rounds out the top five. Jeff Gordon is in sixth. Seventh is Ricky Rudd. Eighth is Sterling Marlin. Ninth is Bobby Labonte. And rounding out the top ten is Mark Martin. And here is the rest of the field where you can pick out your favorite driver. Uh, the winner's purse of a $240,000. Three lead changes. Time of race, 14 05 roughly average speed of around 170.5 miles per hour and the margin of victory is 0.3 seconds so Matt Keseth did not win by much all right guys so here are the point standings so far as you can see we are still maintaining our 20th place uh, points position as we go check out the top five Dale Hart Jr. is still your points leader he is now 92 points ahead of Dale Jarrett Mark Martin is third 245 points back Jeff Gordon in fourth 253 back and rounding out the top five is Jimmy Johnson 275 back and rounding out the top ten is Bobby Labonte 543 points back let's go ahead and check out the awards for the week as Mike Keseth is the pole award winner, and he led the most laps, so he gets 15K altogether. Ricky Rudd passed the most people. Jeff Gordon logged the fastest lap of the race. Uh, Andrew Hicks, rookie of the race, he was doing really well, so good for him. And Jeff Burton has the most exciting pass of the race. So, yeah, like I said, all in all, not a good finish for us. Um, I've noticed that... Uh, and it, the, the thing that's so weird to me is, like, there was a race, I, th I believe it was last last week, where we came in behind someone and got out ahead of them, and we were still far back. So that's why I'm starting to think it might be a little bit of that uh, artificial difficulty to make other people faster, even if it shouldn't work out that way. But... You know, we're going to keep pushing through. We got at least two more uh, two more seasons of this. Um, the f uh, fourth season, then fifth. Fifth will probably be the last one. I won't do any more, uh, any more NASCAR Thunder uh, career mode after that anyway. So, yeah, uh, not bad. It, it, it's not horrible, but I kind of wish we had done better. Um, so we'll just have to just keep digging, keep uh, keep upgrading the car, keep getting better every race, and uh, we'll, just, we'll just do what we can. You know, we'll just do what we can. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, if you hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you do enjoy these races, I do them every Sunday following the NASCAR season. As you can see, the next race will be at Infineon, so it'll be pretty interesting, <laughs> to say the least. Um, Infineon is one of those very, very... Uh, it's it's unexpected things that happen there so anything goes but anyway guys uh thank you so much for watching and i will see you next week at infinity